Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is my Lady Trajan's two month update. Um, today we went to his his um, doctor's appointment. And poor thing, he got I think four shots and then one was um, an oral. Oh my gosh, I felt so bad for him when he got his shots because um, the first one she did, he actually started bleeding a lot. And he was bleeding like so much that it got all over his clothes. But I'm going to put spray and wash on it to see if the blood comes out because it was a lot of blood. But if it doesn't, it's okay because it was a three month outfit and he is um, quickly growing out of his three month outfits. He just started fitting into them about two weeks ago. Yeah, they fit perfectly so I'm guessing another two weeks they might um, be too small. So we actually, I had to go and buy him some more like sleep and play outfits for a three to six month size because I didn't realize it but I didn't have any like because I haven't personally bought him any clothes but I didn't realize that nobody got me any three to six month sizes. So it jumped from three months to six to nine month clothes and much. that's not going to work for him. So I just bought a set of three um, sleep and play clothing. Of course, I'll buy more clothes for him, but I just thought I'd have that for when he, right off the bat, like, grows out of him. So I'll have something already washed and ready to be put on him. And then I'll just buy more clothes, depending on like, how often he goes through clothes. Because, like, right now he goes through a lot of clothes. But anyways, back to his appointment. So they measured his head and his length and his weight. At his one month appointment, he was 10.1 ounces, I believe, and this time he was 12 pounds 7 ounces. And she said that's good, but I guess they, um, since he was 8 pounds when he was born, I guess they expect him to weigh even more right now, but I guess he's getting back into like a normal growth curve or something, she said. And then he was 22 inches and like 1 fourth long or something which was good because I think the last time we went it was like 21 inches and when he was born he was 19 inches and yeah he did good up until it was time to take his shots he cried for at least I think he cried for a couple minutes but yeah I tried the pacifier and that didn't work and so they like let you stay in the room um, however long you want because you know like you have to put the clothes back on the baby and stuff I um I put his clothes back on and then I nursed him for like five minutes to get him to calm down and he did thankfully and then I forgot oh I forgot to give him the Tylenol because I like brought it with me because I wasn't sure like how much to give him but um, the doctor she told me um, how much to give him so I just gave him that too before I nursed him. And I guess it worked because he slept after that. Went to Target afterwards and he slept the whole time. He was such a good boy. My niece, she she was so concerned when we were in the doctor's office when he started crying. She was like, he, she, he's, she said, she hurt him. <laughs> I felt so bad because like, the nurse was probably like, oh gosh. Now this little girl thinks I'm a horrible person because I hurt her little cousin. Yeah, so I was so glad to like leave out of there. We don't have to go back until his four months checkup in November. So that's nice. Give us a, another break. So who knows what he'll weigh by then. He'll, he might be weighing like 16 pounds by then or not. I'm holding him right now because he just woke up. Like when we came home, he was he woke up and he was content and he wasn't crying or anything. So I just, um, I just breastfed him again. He went right back to sleep and then he just woke up now. But now he's sleeping again because I was going to like hold him up to see how, to show you all like how big he's gotten. But he is like, and he's sleeping with his eyes closed right now. Which he gets from his father. My husband, he sleeps with his eyes half open. It's so creepy. But yeah, here I'll show you him a little, real quick. If he lets me. And he's getting so big. I'm trying not to touch his legs because 
I know they still hurt him. It might be time for me to um, give them some more uh, Tylenol because I think it's said every four to six hours. Day to day development. Um, he makes like noises, like cooing noises and stuff, like he's trying to talk to you. He does it most often, like after he wakes up. He's always looking around, looking to see what you're doing. What else is he smiles now? Uh, usually he smiles at things like when he's like looking off, and I'm like, what does he see that we don't see? You know, it's so weird how they do that. He moves his legs around a lot, like if I'm like picking him up to like move him to like different sides, like when I'm holding him, he'll put his feet down like like he's standing up, and it's so crazy. It was like he's so strong. He doesn't flail his arms around as much. I think he's starting to get control of them and his legs too. So he doesn't do that. Oh, he drools so much now. Like, in the first month, he never drooled. Never, ever. And now I have to, like, keep a bib on him all the time when he's awake because he's just drooling all over. It'll wet his whole top of his shirt that it's so, like, his drooling is so bad. So good thing we have a lot of bibs. Like, so, I don't know how many bibs we got. Probably, like, 15 of them or something combined. So I put a different bib on him every day or two times a day I'll have bibs on him like because they're just soaked oh yeah the doctor um she asked me does he like turn to the left a lot with his head and I said yeah and I, and I was going to ask her about that because I did notice he's always turned to the left when he's looking around and stuff and she said that they sell pillows that um, you can put behind his head that make his head stay straight. So I'm going to like try to look on Amazon or somewhere for those because yeah it's crazy like his head's always turned to the left. And she said that um, she could tell because I guess his head's starting to get flat on that side. So not the back of his head just the left side. And so I guess I have to try to figure out yeah a pillow for him to be able to do that because he even sleeps with his head that way and I don't know if he'll be able to sleep with a pillow behind his head like in the middle of the night but at least maybe during the day we can have it behind his head like when I can watch him and oh yeah and he's developed like cradle cap on his head so I always put coconut oil on his head every day and then I'll either use a comb to get up the dry skin or I'll use a brush or I'll use both I'll do the comb first and then I'll use a brush because the brush brushes away like the dry skin that's already like come up from his head she said that um, obviously since he's still small you're not supposed to give him baths like every day and I told her like I've only been giving him a bath like twice a week and she said well yeah she said that's good and if I want to um try to get the cradle cap off his head sooner I can just wash his hair every day or every other day and see if that helps get it off of his head I think I'll start trying to do that and she said that you can even use head and shoulders or just baby shampoo because like I don't use any of that I just have been using like the you know the head to toe soap for, for babies to wash his hair and his body I don't know if I want to, I'm ready to use head and shoulders on his head. I guess if this continues, I'll, just, I'll have to go and try that, but I mean, I'll stick to like the head to toe shampoo or soap, and if that doesn't work, then I'll go to baby shampoo and then the head and shoulders, because I don't know, it sounds like head and shoulders is very strong. Like, I couldn't imagine putting that on my baby's head, but I did look that up, like that was another suggestion when I Googled it online. But we'll see. I'll have to update that on his um, the next uh, video for him. I'll, I'll let you know how what progress has gone on with the cradle cap. Uh, we've been giving him gas drops, and those work great because he used to wake up in the middle of his sleep because I guess the gas was like so bad, and he, you know he finally got to release it and wake him up. But now like. He does really good. He's in um, size 1 diapers now, but I'm about to transition him to size 2 because 
size 1 diapers only go up to 14 pounds and he is at 12.7 so I might as well switch over because I only have two bags of size 1 left so I mean I'm not going to buy any more size 1 I'll just start buying some more size 2 because I got a lot of size 2 already yeah I'll just move on to size 2 because I can tell that his, his diapers are at the threshold of like needing to move up I mean they keep them all contained still like I have I don't have any accidents with them with the pampers but I did have a, a bag of um, the Huggy little snugglers in size one and I mean one little bag that lasts us about a week or maybe even less than a week but it was like the worst days when we were using the little snugglers he was constantly having accidents even with me changing him more often like it would always come up through the back so I don't know if little snugglers are just shorter in the back than um, pampers or what but they just did not work for him so I was really bummed but we only had one bag of the little snugglers thankfully and the rest were all pampers and I only bought the little snugglers and that's that one bag of it because I had a coupon for like two dollars off of it so I was like, oh, I can't pass that up. I'll try them out and see how they do. And yeah, didn't do very well. And so now I'm worried about the size 2 ones. Because I have a whole box of size 2 um, little snugglers that I didn't buy. And that's a box of 92 of them. So hopefully they last. I might use though, I might open that box first. Just in case it's a whole like, maybe they'll be okay for him in the beginning and as he gets a you know starts gaining more weight he might not be able to hold him like his um pee and poop and so yeah i might just do that box first and get it over with and hope they don't have him leaking all over the place like i did so much laundry that week but the funny thing is like i like the um the huggies baby dry or is it baby dry snug and dry huggy snug and dry like the regular diapers those have always been great like i use those on my niece but i'm gonna stick to the um, pamper swaddlers because those are great and i bought a bag of baby dry ones too pampers baby dry ones so i can't wait to see how those do too because you get more you get more diapers than the baby dry yeah otherwise um he hasn't had any issues with diapers those diapers like it hasn't made them like break out in rashes or anything like I know some diapers do to babies so I'm not sure if he has sensitive skin or not and we still continue to wash his clothes and um free and clear detergent now I've been trying to get him to go like I've been trying to put him in our room to go to bed at 11 every night or 10 30 10 30 or 11 and so I can um so I try to like to get a routine. I try to change his clothes before like around that time. And then like so I change him into like the pajamas if he's not wearing them already. Because usually during the day we put like um, onesies on him. We go in the room by like 11. And if he's wide awake I'll feed him. And then I'll put him down if he finally goes to sleep. And then he'll usually pop up around 1.30. Or depending on how long it took me to like get him fed and sleep. The f so if he's not sleeping by 12.30, he'll usually wake up by like 3.30 or 4 in the morning and I'll feed him again. And then he'll go back down and then he'll get up at either like 6.30 or 7. And that uh, when he gets up that time is when I, I get up and I change him and then feed him and then he falls back asleep. The doctor... On our two week visit, he said that we shouldn't get him used to like being changed every time we get up to feed him because then he's gonna wanna get up every time and have that done or he won't sleep comfortably. So I guess I've slept trained, I've been sleep training him to not expect to be changed every time we get up to feed. Because he does good now, like when I get him up to change him at the six or seven o'clock time. He goes right back to sleep afterwards. 
that's like the limit on the diaper, like the nighttime diaper. And he said that, because I told him, I was like, I'm worried about him getting diaper rash, like, and at night, because he's starting to get it, like, if I went longer periods of time of not changing him. And so the doctor just said, oh, put, put, um, diaper rash cream on him before bed at night and he should be fine because, you know, that'll keep the barrier there. And so that's what I've been doing and it's been working. So I'll just keep it up so he doesn't expect, you know, to be woken up to be changed every time. And it saves me, like, walking like a zombie to change him because I have to walk all the way into here into his room, which is right next to our room, um, and change him. But it's still like a pain in the butt to get up and do that. Um, I don't want to turn the big light on. So usually I change him when it's like half half dark in here. Because you know, like, you know, the sun's not up at that time. But it's still pretty. It's, there's a little light outside. Because so, I need to buy like a, a light to go in here that's not bright. So it doesn't wake him up fully. So yeah, I have to get up at least twice every night to feed him or oh or kind of like three times because after we get up at six or seven we go back to sleep until like ten nine or ten o'clock because I'm just so tired like if I got like a full six or seven hours between that time we go in the bed and he gets up at seven I I could potentially just stay up from seven on in the morning but I'm just so tired from not getting that deep sleep that I I have to go back to sleep for a few more hours. And then I still wake up and I'm exhausted. I only, and I have to get up at 9 or 10 because that's when my niece gets up every day. No matter what time she goes to sleep, she's always up at 9 or 10. Oh yeah, and then him and napping. So yeah, we'll get up at 9 or 10. And sometimes he'll go back to sleep because obviously he can go back to sleep, I can't. And he'll go back to sleep sometimes till like noon. Or he'll stay up all that time and finally crash at like one or two he'll get up for a little while and then he'll go back to sleep and then when it's starting to be the time for me to um, make dinner around like six he'll wake right up and he's wide awake at that time which is the time I would love for him to be asleep so I could get dinner done and stuff because he always wants to see me in the room and so I try to bring his like little chair I let him sit in I try to bring that into the kitchen Sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes he wants me to like hold him or be sitting down like near him instead of me like doing stuff while he's sitting there. That's the rough time of the day. And then he'll crash again to like at like 7, 7.30 until like 9.30 and then he'll be up again. So that's why it's kind of hard for me to get him into bed at 11. So I need to figure out how to get him sleeping by 11 instead of us going to the room at 11. So I think I'm gonna um, make a three month update and then four month will be a probably a nice longer update since I'll have an appointment involved with that one. Thanks for watching and please like and comment on this video. Please subscribe if you like what you saw in this video. I have many other videos similar to this one a lot of pregnancy videos leading up to me having him and then I have like videos here and there in between so please um check them out and have a good day everyone bye